Oh man, as we get further and further into just me being a DM, I find it harder and harder to remember what happened last time. Uh, Dude, I spent like five hours in an orphanage. I, it was a blur. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we spent five hours in an orphanage? Well, I did. You were a lizard at some yeah. point. It was... Yeah. Yeah, but I was then, in the Then I fucked off and bought some cowboy boy. clothes. Yeah, now you're a cowboy. <laughs> it's, just, it's just how things are. <laughs> it's just the way it is. It's nobody's fault. <laughs> um. So last time on Spellbound and the Curse of Strahd, uh, after uh, Alesia killed Freak um, wow. outside of Velaki City. Too soon. Yeah, a little, a little too soon. Um. Uh, she was found by Marcus, who was supposed to be leaving town uh, to go back to Barovia Village. Um, taking her back to uh, the nurse, who was in, uh, which you guys have figured out now to be uh, the King's Van, <laughs> um, which uh, Leku investigated last session. Um, she's getting medical treatment while the rest of you went to go kind of explore Velaki a bit more. Uh, the majority of you heading to the orphanage kind of scope the place out before you drop off the children there. Um, while there, uh, you managed to find out that uh, the church's uh, grave digger named Millie uh, had fallen ill. Um, and Julian popped Mephelprin, uh, which seemed to actually cure whatever ailment he was uh, enduring. Um, meanwhile, Dante and Julian got uh, souped up with some new clothes. Um, Leku investigated around the, uh, sort of auto mechanic shop, and Yertle, uh, continued his quest for more flowers to purchase a coffin from Crazy Coffins <laughs> in Velaki. The weirdest transaction ever. <laughs> no, it's not. I don't have any evidence on other ones, but no. Um, you guys also found out that one of the orphans at the orphanage, uh, a little boy named Cedric, had been uh, killed uh, in some instance, and he had stab wounds, and his neck was broken as if from a fall. Um, don't know what that's about, but... Uh, <laughs> that's whack. It's, oh, man. Uh, Gail explored the attic, where he found a big broken window and a whole bunch of uh, just sort of out and about uh, bits and beds, lots of blankets, uh, other sort of tools and bits inside the orphanage. Um, you guys met a girl named Voyage. Uh, Julian met a girl named Cece. Um, and Julian also noticed that uh, one of the girls had a large set of bruises all along her arms. Um, but you guys did not uh, put any children up for adoption in the orphanage. Um, and as we begin today's session, you guys have all made your way back, uh, except for Alesia, uh, to the Holiday Inn. Nice. Uh, which is where we pick back up. Oh man, there, there he is. He's still this there. Oh boy. Dead. Oh no, the leg! <laughs> yeah, the leg's missing. I'll rebuild it, I'll make it stronger. <laughs> Better leg, super leg. Super leg, super kicker. Yeah, let's just becomes a guy. full centaur. <laughs> a robo centaur. Oh no. Except for our lower half's the dog. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say we make it a motorcycle. We make it a dog. Come on. Oh, dog a motorcycle! Car. Oh shit. Oh, lower body. Yep. Yeah. Lower body motorcycle. So how's your uh, How's your Christmas drive? Making a modern day. Oh, for, I, made a I made a sci-fi for horsemen people. I based off that idea. I'm a motorbike tar. How's Chris Strad going? Yeah, I shot my leg off. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, you know, we have a blood hunter. It's like, oh yeah, good choice. It's like, yeah, uh, they they shot their leg off with a gun, and now they're a motorcycle centaur. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, because the thing is, like, the whole idea behind the centaur is that you were combining a horse with something. You sorry, you're combining a human with or have something fast for the <sighs> most part. So why not a motorcycle? That's a dumb idea, Gail. 
Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Motorcycle Centaur, arm. what a stupid idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I, tried, I got veggies from the flowers, things I was trying to grow before fucking flowering up my arms by accident. <laughs> hey, little flower man. I was going, I was going to bribe the people in people with the veggies for a room. Because Keith doesn't remember if he has a room or not. Ah, uh, you sh you're technically supposed to share. If you want your own, go right ahead. He doesn't know that. I literally told you oh, I went past. That. So we come back in with yeah, Dante, Leku, Julian, and Keith, oh. uh, all reunited, um, just yeah. outside the Holiday Inn. Um, Were those cop? Was that cop car there before? Yeah. Yeah, Wait. that was there. Mm. Uh -huh. One was at least. Okay. It's oh, actually, as you as you <laughs> as you look over the cop car. Um, you can see the cop car is, uh, the cop is currently inside the car. Yeah. Um, you see sort of a bigger, uh, police officer wearing sort of the bright blue uniform and the little hat. Mm -hmm. Um, he's not paying you guys any notice. You see every now and again he kind of looks up at the road, um, sort of run, that runs past the hotel, and he's got a big, uh, sort of clipboard in his hand. He's got one of those speed guns. Um... No speeding in the luck. <laughs> yeah, no, no fucking speeding. No. Yeah. But they still they still fine you though. <laughs> yeah, you have to pay the fine then die. Yeah, you have to pay to die. Oh no! They put you, you on death row. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So as the rain kind of pours down from above, uh, Dante, much much more bearable with the rim of your hat uh, now protecting your face, uh, the new <sighs> sort of frock coat of the uh, the cowboy jacket. Um. Julian, you still have your cloak, even in your sort of little smart sweater. Uh, you sort of rolled up and tied the sleeve up in. Uh, and like you sort of just marching behind as Keith holds this door above his head, <laughs> uh, sort of blocking the rain out for a good chunk of you. But uh, you guys just can make your way back up, kind of seeing like the, the oddly sad pool, um, just kind of as the raindrops hit it and this rubber duck uh, sort of floaty just kind of bobs up and down on the water. Um, as you guys make your way toward the entrance, what do you guys want to do? They forgot to put the pool cover on. Do I think they have a pool cover? Oh no. That's just all rainwater. There's no pool covers in Barovia. Oh no. It's all rainwater, man. It's covers. a hotel manager's worst fucking nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mosby would never let this happen. Uh, he's gonna walk to the front door since he has some fresh uh, veg and fruit from when he tried to grow the flowers. Never yeah. told me how much that was, so I'm assuming it's like at least small enough decent it's like a thing million. for like a meal. Um, I forget if Yertle explained himself or if he just dodged the question, uh, but Yertle now has all along his arms sort of sprouting in between his turtle-like scales, uh, just a copious amount of flowers just blossoming out of his skin. He was never asked about that. <laughs> Dude, I assume he's just gone through some kind of, like, weird total puberty. I don't- I ain't gonna ask. Oh, I know he was, and then he said Some puberty. druid puberty. And then ask if that was Druidy! Druidy. <laughs> I'm not upstairs, it's late. Like, even for Barovia, this it, is late. It's, it's about nearing, um... Sort of 6, 7 uh, in the evening. Shit, it's not that late. Yeah. It's like a whole lot more four hours of snooping we could have done. Yeah, well. You guys had a weird sleep schedule when you got here. Um, yeah. You're telling me. Oh, there's those two guys. Ooh. Oh, yeah, so the three of you see Yurtle walk in. Uh, like you, Dante, Julian, you guys do anything? I'm going upstairs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so you just go out uh, around to the side. Uh, Slime, what are you doing? Falls behind. Oh, uh, you guys make your way up to the balcony where um, you see Gail's just kind of leaning over the railing, uh, looking down at where you guys can see Yurtle walking up to the uh, bar downstairs. Um, uh, <laughs> Keith, when you get to the bar, uh, this woman kind of looks... 
a little hesitantly at you. Um, and she kind of makes her way over, kind of putting her arms down and says, Oh yeah, what can I get you? Keith will smile and be like, Ah, do you guys need fresh fruit? Vegetables. Uh, fresh fruit? Yeah. Oh yeah, um... Oh, I suppose we might. Uh, give me just a moment. Um, and you see she kind of makes her way from the bar and kind of goes through a side door. As she does that, Keith's gonna, like, start putting the fruit and vegetable onto the, like, bar. <laughs> just onto the counter, yeah, just one after the other. Um, you see she comes back out with a man. Um, and they both kind of stride over. Uh, and the man kind of regards you says, I hear you're selling produce. I wouldn't say selling's the right word, because I ain't that professional in this type of trade. Uh, of offering produce? That makes sense? Uh, the, the woman kind of looks a little quizzically at you, but the man kind of uh, smiles and he says, Well, if you're offering... Produce, then I humbly accept. Uh, what do you have? Uh, he'll point out what he's put on the counter. <laughs> um, he kind of looks over it, kind of nods. He says, um, "Can I get you anything to drink?" Ah, uh, water, I guess. That's okay. All right, coming right up. Um, Thank and you see, he just kind of swings around to the side. Um, and he makes sort of a motion with his hand uh, to the woman. She kind of nods, looks at you like, gives you a weird look again. Um, and then she heads in through the back door. Um, he sort of scoops your vegetables off the table. Um, and then he sort of slides a glass full of water to you. Thank you. Uh, you're looking behind you. Can you look up and see uh, your friends up on the balcony above? He'll give them a wave. Probably like when he does wave, he'll finally like notice the flowers like move like freely in that when he does wave. Mm -hmm. He'll arm a bit more. <laughs> Watching the flowers. Uh, we'll have, he'll have his drink then. Try to figure out where he's meant to be hiding in this shell for the night. Uh, what are the three boys upstairs doing? <laughs> we vibing? We walking? I'm, just, uh, I'm gonna walk past, just... Why the, why the hell does Gio have so many fruit and vegetables? Dude, I don't know. What is he doing? It's like, he know. takes out like a baker's dozen, just like... <laughs> of just... kumquats. Um, uh, you see a couple of dragon fruits down there. Uh, it's covered in flowers. Entire pea pods. What the hell? Bunch of fruits and vegetables. It's you, best not to. It's best not to worry about it. You think you understand someone? When they go and do this. This is like the least weirdest thing he's done. I don't know. You're you're covered in flowers. And... Constantly would be more weirder. You in a bush for a couple yeah. of minutes? I don't. I don't trust it. Natural. You can. Cursed. The... We don't know. To the magic made his race has given him flowers. Um, you guys walk past Gale, just kind of leaning against the rail and kind of looking down at Yurtle, also in confusion. He, he kind of lifts up one arm in the titular sup motion, uh, giving you guys like a little grin. I wave back. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. I'm gonna knock on the lady's door because my best friend busted me out of thirty bucks. <laughs> I said I'd um, pay for it. <laughs> it's still a little partially open, um, so you kind of duck your head in as you knock, um, and you can see uh, Arena and Miriam both standing over uh, the baby. Uh, was, they sort of lay down in the bed. Um, Ooh, you see they're both kind of sitting by it Miriam sort of uh, sitting on the bed next to the baby as Arena kind of bends down and kind of she's like poking at it as the baby kind of giggles uh, kind of grabbing her finger here and there 
Don't poke the bamboo. Oh no. They're eating it, Dante. They've consumed no, they the ain't. baby. No, they ain't. I can hear it. That's what they... Um, as remember. you knock, uh, they both kind of look up and Miriam kind of smiles as she sees you come back. Uh, she kind of looks a little wide-eyed at Dante, who comes strutting in with this clink, <laughs> clink. Um, as these spurred boots sort of just, uh, they get muffled against the carpet, but just on the wooden floor. Um, he just has this big presentation, he kind of puts his thumbs through his belt. Um, Classic. Walking, and you see, you see Arena kind of gives you this, like, you're, you're not sure the negative or positive connotations, but it's in look of awe. Well, um, that was the point. <laughs> um, and Miriam kind of smiles and she says, "How was, uh, how was town?" Then walk over, and flop onto the bed, give it a sigh. Move everything. Oh no. <laughs> no matter where I click, I select something. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. You made the rooms too customizable. <laughs> we've trans we've transitioned into destructible environment, uh oh. D. &D. <laughs> oh. Man, the town's like kinda safe, but it's kinda whack still. The orphanage is like okay, but some weird stuff's happening there. Uh, Rina asks, uh, like what? Like one of the kids that was sick, the grave digger, you know, like how we were sick, Miriam, when we first got here. But it was like a lot slower, so he wasn't throwing up lungs. Like with the circle, like the demon thing? Yeah, so I'm gonna yeah. go back at some point and look for circles. Arena kind of like looks quizzically between you and Miriam and kind of stands up, kind of gesturing with her hand. She says, Wait, there's a demon at the orphanage? Well. Now hold on there a minute. <laughs> no one's saying anything like that. Right? And I look over at Julian. Well, I didn't see a demon, but. The place is exhibiting demon like symptoms. Right. Irina kind of puts her hands on her hips and turns to you, Dante. Says, "What is he talking about?" <laughs> so, how much do I know about demons? Um, you studied quite a bit uh, at Sphinthris. Mm -hmm. Um, in the future, other timeline, Dante gets the ability to conjure them. <laughs> um, and also can do it again. They exist in uh, what is like the lower plane. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it has a lot in common with sort of like the semi theological hell. Huh. Um, and a lot of times uh, there are rifts that open up in the lower planes between the upper and mid planes. Hmm. Um, that causes like a demon to wander into the material plane or to the elemental planes and to start killing shit. Um, there is still the D D distinction between devils and demons. Uh -huh. Um, devils being much more lawful demons being chaotic uh yeah. if a demon ever comes to the surface it just like kills indiscriminately uh devils are a little bit stranger um but they're they're mostly just kind of lobbed in with other monsters that kind of summon uh and spawn just like they're just naturally occurring <laughs> fantasy monsters mm -hmm. uh But demons can also be through magic summoned, which was the situation back at the uh, Brooks Mansion back in Barovia Village. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. All right. Well, I uh, well you see, it's like this. <laughs> A little while after we, you know, first came to this this place. Uh. We had a, a strange occurrence. Uh, some of us just kind of started being sick. And it uh, wasn't good. 
Uh, it wasn't a good look for me. Uh, it was a whole adventure. We blew up a hospital. Don't worry about it. Oh, well, I heard about that. Yeah, that's uh, when we found Marcus. But uh, we, we got... Um, we got that Felprin stuff. You still got that, Julian? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I It was some kind of, like, curse or something that's also a sickness. I don't know. I, it had something to do with demons, I think. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> she looks a little confused, but she just kind of shrugs. All this wizard stuff goes over my head. Um, and she kind of walks about over to the baby again. Um, and Miriam kind of stands up from the bed, uh, kind of paces a bit and says, I mean, we can't, er, Julian, we can't put a baby in an orphanage that might have a demon in it. I kind of like sit up and I'm like, well, no shit, Miriam. <laughs> She's like, well, I mean, we should do something. We should go look for a circle or a demon or... Yeah, I'm gonna do it in the um, morning. Do, so, uh, do I need to shoot anything? I mean, we might need you there to shoot a demon. Uh-huh. And you're good at I'm pretty shooting good at things. It. I mean, demons are tricky. They can possess people. They can be summoned. Uh, they can naturally occur. They can hide. They can turn invisible. They can plane shift. Um, and Miriam kind of starts pacing and she kind of just starts uh, <laughs> talking to herself. As Arena kind of looks at her a little baffled. She reads a lot of books. Rah. Rah. Like, like, can we draw our own circle and, like, bind him in a way? Like, trap him? Miriam kind of stops for a second kind of thinks about it and she says, We... Hmm. Well, Julian, that's really dangerous, but... If we knew the demon's name, we could. Oh, it's individual true name. If we found the circle and we had a minute, and maybe even a textbook. Um, and she kind of starts... Um, I'm all out of books. Kind of tugging at her scarf. She says, <laughs> I don't know if I know enough to do it, but we could, we could try? It might just be able to destroy the summoning circle. Would that get rid of him, or just release him? That would release him, but, um... It would at least show itself? Alright. I don't know if we can do that either. Well, if I can see it, I can shoot it, so... I mean, but back in Borough Village, we never even found the demon. We just left. Well, yeah, but there weren't a bunch of kids being told... Well, I mean, other than us, but... Kids that weren't wizards that could deal with it. To be fair, actually, um, I don't want to tell Marcus that. That might be important. <laughs> Miriam says, uh, He left a bit ago. Um, we can wait till he comes back. Uh, Luck, are you doing anything? <coughs> Not much. Just vibing. <laughs> Alright, Lucky, just kind of stick your hands in your pockets, kind of just looking around. Um, Yertle, you do see your friends go into rooms uh, upstairs. Hmm. <laughs> You're not sure what to make of this. <laughs> okay. I don't know what to make of this. Ow. You know, um, if I haven't taken off the jersey yet, I'm definitely doing it so that the jersey can't ruin any of the flowers. I liked the jersey. <laughs> uh, real quick at this point, we're going to cut uh, from the Holiday Inn. Cut to...
<sighs> um, Alesia. Oh, wrong one. Alessia, Irish. Yep. Yep. All right. Um, Sorry. No, you're good. Um. Alessia, you very, very slowly come to. Um, and as you do, I'd like you to go ahead and roll uh, as many of your hit dice as you'd like to. You basically gain the benefits of a short rest. <laughs> um. But as that's going on, um, you kind of slowly pull yourself up um, and kind of look around. Oh, yep. Um, oh, I don't have baby cam anymore. Uh, <laughs> door cam. The door just summons into the room. It floats in the corner again. Every door is secretly a cam. Don't worry about it. The doors have eyes. Um, you kind of slowly pull yourself up to a sitting position. Um, kind of rub some of the sleep from your eyes. And as you look around, you see you're currently in the ambulance. Um, and you can see where a crane has sort of uh, been attached to all of the wooden uh, weavings across the top. Um, and you see uh, Marcus kind of sits uh, at the edge of the bed. Um, and he kind of looks back over to you um, as you kind of slowly pull yourself up. You can see where uh, there is no more leg. Um, just sort of a little below the, th uh, like halfway through the thigh. Uh, there's just a clean cut and it's just all bandages. Um, you immediately start sort of getting like the measurements of what you would need to <laughs> uh, repair and replace it. Um, as Marcus, uh, Marcus asks, Alessia, are you alright? And he kind of gets to his feet, kind of looks over to you. <laughs> Do you say anything? <laughs> no, Alessia is just kind of just staring at her like not knowing how to feel right now about everything that has just happened. Um, real quick, just some mechanical stuff. Uh, your speed right now is currently uh, zero feet. Um, if you use both arms, uh, your speed becomes ten feet. Also, all of your weapons, uh, including those attached to your arm, have currently been removed. <gasps> no. Um, and you see Marcus kind of awkwardly kind of fidgets with his hand um, at the base of the bed. Uh, kind of looking at you and looking at the ground. And he says, Alessia, I am. Um, I think I've put together what happened. And I want you to know that it's all right. Um, I understand what you did and why you did it. And there's another beat of silence um, just as you kind of focus in on your leg. Um, and he says, uh, Nurse D um, performed uh, surgery on you. She helped treat the wound. Um, she said it had been self-inflicted. Uh, and he kind of awkwardly kind of scratches the back of his neck, not really sure what to say. And he says, I've covered uh, Koss. She was very understanding. Um, they're going to look after you here for a bit. Um, until they can get you to the Holiday Inn where the rest of your friends are staying. Uh, from there... 
And he kind of chokes up a little bit, but he keeps on talking. He says, uh, Emric, uh, Mr. McKinley, he's still happy to have you on as a sort of apprentice, um, an assistant. Uh, just because you can't walk doesn't mean you can't work. Um, but you have as much time as you need. Um, and if that's any indication, and he kind of gestures to your robot arm, he says, Mr. McKinley says that while you're here, any of his materials are yours to use. And he kind of gives like a forced half smile. Um, and he looks down at you and he says, <clears throat> you're free to lay here as long as you'd like. Um, I'm going to be leaving. I still have business to attend to. Um, Mr. McKinley uh, and his daughter were ready to take you to the Holiday Inn whenever you're ready, and you can recover there with the rest of your friends. And listen, um, and he kind of stops again. Uh, kind of half turns away, then turns back, and he says, I'm sorry what happened, but it wasn't your fault. And he kind of, like, affirmatively kind of puts his hand down in the bed's base a little bit. Um, and then he goes ahead and he throws open uh, the back doors of the ambulance, kind of goes to hop out, and kind of turns back to you and says, I'll be back as soon as I can. Uh, and then he sort of jops, like, the foot down um, and kind of makes his way around uh, back over to the Dwarven Man beneath the ambulance. Um, you can kind of, like, vaguely hear them exchange a few words. You're not really paying attention. Uh, and then you hear the sounds of Marcus walking out. And you're just kind of left by yourself. Well, Elise is stubborn. So she's going to, after she hears Marcus get out, she's going to drag herself probably with a giant thud out of bed. Uh, yeah, so as you um, try to pull yourself up, go to make a dexterity check with disadvantage. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. You... <laughs> what that 17 represents is you get a very, very firm grasp on sort of the bits on the end and go to pull yourself up um, and just sort of instinctually um, kind of start going to walk with your leg. Um, but as you sort of let go to try to keep your balance, you immediately kind of face plant and slip on some of the blood, kind of thudding to the ground with a smack onto the cold, hard ground of the ambulance. Uh, for a nat one, you're going to take a d6 fall damage. Oh. Uh, it's going to be two points off, which rounds you down to an even 20. It's easier to deal with for everybody. <laughs> uh, you're going to slam. You thud with the bottom of your chin, bam down into the metal lining of the bottom. As you kind of pull up, you can feel blood kind of starting to uh, drip down your chin onto your neck. Um, as you hear a couple of footsteps um, and a kind of a brusque dwarven voice called out, Oi, lass! Careful there! Um, as he kind of hops back up, kind of swaying the ambulance a bit uh, as he gets up in its suspended position. Um, kind of comes over and says, Oi, come here. He kind of lifts his arms underneath yours, pulls you up uh, to your feet. Foot. Yeah, to your foot. <laughs> um, you hear a woman's voice who you vaguely recognize as being the nurse saying, Is she awake yet? Oh yeah, she's coming. Alright, come on, lass. Um, and uh, you see he goes to sweep your current leg uh, as if to carry you. Do you do anything? Lizzie is going to just try and take a step back the best she can. <laughs> uh, as he goes to sort of start carrying you, you kind of take a step back. Uh, go make a deck save again. <laughs> Without disadvantage, just normal deck save. Ooh. Um, you immediately start to fall back, but you catch yourself uh, sort of pushing uh, pushing the bed against 
um, as you almost could have fall down in your butt. Um, and Emmerich sort of uh, sighing says, Come on. You're getting off this ambulance in one of two ways. One's on your ass or mine. Uh, and he holds up a hand to kind of help you regain your balance and get up. I'll get out on mine then. All right, suit yourself. Um, and he kind of backs up a bit uh, towards the end and kind of gestures to uh, the doorway of the ambulance. Please, gonna just open the side door. <laughs> yeah, you could just open the side <laughs> door. <laughs> yeah. Please, it will push open the side door and and uh, sit down and just kind of. Throw okay, out. yeah, I was gonna make it. <laughs> you got to make another deck save, but um, you do carefully lower yourself to a point you kind of catch on to this little uh, gas dispenser here. Get your hand on it, kind of get your foot in your footing. Still, you still got footing um, on the foot. <laughs> uh, as you kind of reach the ground, you see he kind of jumps off. The ambulance kind of sways again as his weight leaves. Um, and he kind of makes his way over under to you, and he says, "All right, come on." Um. And you see, he kind of takes out of his pocket this massively oversized dwarven wrench. Um, and he hands it to you. Lazy will take it. Actually, I, I think that even an animals will probably have like, some kind of crutch inside. Um, so he, he doesn't take out the wrench. He, he takes out a uh, crutch. <laughs> Um, and he gives you the one. She'll... She she looks at it for a good few moments as if, like, debating what to do with it before taking it and putting it under her arm. Um, as you're debating, he says, the stick don't care if you're stubborn. Um, <laughs> and as he hands it to you, he just kind of starts walking off um, sort of into this middle bit here. Oh no. One under the cars. Oh, they're being suspended by, um... Oh, okay. Uh, cranes. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, action sliding like... <laughs> yeah. Um... Uh, as you kind of shuffle your way forward, um, this nurse woman kind of comes up to you. Um, says, well, your other leg's fine. Um, your balance is all right. She kind of gets bound, kind of starts looking at the wrappings. Um, and then she kind of comes out forward, kind of takes out uh, one of those little light tools, and she kind of shines in your eye, um, kind of blinding you for a bit. And she says, all right, look to your left. What? Look to your left. Come on. I don't have all day. Look, just let me go. She looks down at you a little bit. She says, I guess there's time for that later. Are you feeling all right? Does that matter? Yes, to me. Well, all right then. Um, she kind of puts her hands together. She says, are you fine to walk? Yeah. All right. Um, and she kind of turns over to uh, the dwarf man. Um, and she says, all right, she should be fine. Uh, no other injuries besides. Um, mm. She kind of turns back. Uh, very quickly, she... Whips out a tongue depressor, kind of presses it to your chin, kind of lifts your chin up, uh, seeing the sort of little tiny busted bit from when you hit the ground. Um, and she says, all right. Um, and you see she go ahead and uh, brings her hand up to your chin. Uh, and she's going to cast a Cure Wound spell. Can I you try and pull her head away? Uh, you want to resist the, the spell? Yep. <laughs> Um, you see a soft, uh, white light sort of come to her hands, and you just pull back, 
um, sort of away from the effect, and she kind of like glares at you a bit. Um, <laughs> and you know she just wasted the spell; she doesn't get the slot back. Um, she kind of glowers at you for a second. She says, "All right, fine. You have the right to receive service, whatever." Um. And she sort of just, uh, click clacking on her heels, uh, sort of just moves out towards the doors to the garage. Um, and she turns back, um, and says, do tell me when, uh, Mr. Kulyana returns. Um, and then she dips out as well. Uh, and Emric kind of comes over, or I guess you come over to him. Yeah. Um, and he says, oh yeah, we'll, uh, put you in the truck. Um, and we'll drive you over to the Holiday Inn. Uh, said so you got friends there? Uh, the other lads came in with you? Rose? Well, I guess they don't really care that much since I've been gone for a while. Hasn't even been a day, man. <laughs> Everyone's doing their own thing. Well, you don't have to go if you don't want to, but uh, I'm sure they'll be glad to see you. Oh, fuck. Where's the holiday? Are you sure? Alright, I trust you, just... And where are my weapons? Oi, right, um, here. Uh, and he kind of goes back up, um, under the ambulance, uh, kind of into its doors, kind of bumbles around in there for a second, hops back out, um, comes back to you carrying just about everything, um, and he says... I, uh, this should be everything. You got these registered, right? Uh, did, did we get them registered? We, we did, uh, right? I think you had a choice to do so. I, I believe everyone got all the weapons registered. Yeah. Just, all right. Uh, that's good. You stay safe out there, right? Yeah. All right. Um, was there, is there a silver dagger with us? Yeah, uh, here I got it. He kind of lifts it out. Um, you see that your gun uh, is not among them. Is what? Your gun? It's yeah. not one of the weapons he has. He has every single one of your weapons except for your gun. I had a gun. Where? <laughs> Marcus told me your gun. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks around to look quizzical. Um, uh, oh, give me a sec. Uh, and he kind of shuffles back inside. Um, hops back out and says, "I, uh, I don't see it in there." Guess he didn't want me to hurt myself with it, but he still lets me have all my normal weapons. Great. Um, so you just walk back? Um, well, first off, uh, she's gonna tell him, um, I'll probably be back soon to work on a new leg. <laughs> and he kind of looks over your um, robot arm and he says, I will admit I'm not much of a, uh, computer technician, but I know a thing or two about moving bits, so I can help you if you need it. We'll see. I need blood first. Hmm. And, and without any explanation, she just starts hobbling towards the <laughs> he door. Looks, he looks confused at that, um, but doesn't seem to comment on it. Uh, and you see this woman kind of get up, and he kind of hold up a, holds up a hand and kind of mutters turns. He kind of walks over. Oh yeah, she wants to walk. Um, they both kind of sit down, kind of watch you go. They both kind of give you little waves, um, and you walk out. So like, so real, real quick again, like how, so it's like the knee or is it above it? No, it basically halfway down the thigh, gone. Oof. So is that above or below the that's knee? That's a bro moment. That's oh. above the, that's above the knee. <laughs> okay. Cause I, I'm trying to think about what prosthetic I'm going to fucking design now. You got the so I need to have leg, man. Shotgun leg. It's the <laughs> only way. No. We're not Double any other option leg? is wrong. Shotgun leg, but also chainsaw leg. Oh. 
You gotta cut off your other leg. Sorry. Look at both. Because you do need both. I just realized that. Like. <laughs> Alizy, Alizy is gonna become a cyborg. That's just all. Oh, what's the fucking Drawfy character that has a sandwich for a leg? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, here we go. Right. A sandwich for the leg. Sandwich for a leg. Delicious. That's the coolest shit ever. I'll plug it later. Um, I'll put or it in. Spell. It'll, in be, I'll, it'll be in, it'll be in uh, no mic. Oh, nice. <laughs> Best JRPG party of all time. Wow. Sitting right here, thanks. JRPG. You don't know my ethnicity. <laughs> oh. oh. Big, big burger. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, one leg is a can of soup, the other is a sandwich. <laughs> I don't even know how that works. <laughs> Alright, we'll leave that at that. Um... <laughs> Thank you, fun. Fuck. Um, so we cut back now to the Holiday Inn. Um, Selecco and Gale are still out in the hallway, Yertle's still down in the uh, bar bit, and everyone else is in uh, the woman's room. Uh, girls' room. Barbit. Um, what are you guys doing? Real vibing, you know? Real. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Real shit. I kind of want to question the, the two lads at the, at the table by themselves. Bro, they've just been like, sitting there. <laughs> yeah, they've just been sitting there. Like, yeah, it's I a free country, to man. Sit there for like, how long have they been here? All day. All day. All day. This is boy. Um, this yeah, Keith, guy. Keith, you look over. You see these two guys. Um, one sort of got this big plaid shirt on, and this big uh, hat. Um, got a long hair and big beard. You see the other one's got entirely bald head. Um, also very large bushy beard, this big ripped uh, sleeves jean jacket. Uh, they both have these hunting rifles leaned up against the table. Um, and they've just both been drinking the whole day. They've been here the entire time. <laughs> I mean, I feel That's like the way to live. <laughs> I don't want to get fucking shot. Uh. I think going upstairs might be might be a good way of finding out where I can clonk out so that you know, we can get up nice and early and try some more gathering technique. So you're heading out back outside? Yeah. Holy shit. Um, it right. is getting pretty late. <clears throat> um, if you wanted to keep trying to grow more flowers throughout the night, you get a point of exhaustion, but you can do it. No, I need my uh, spell slots back for what I'm planning. So the idea is <clears throat> going outside to because I don't know their smoking policies. And Keith Yaddle's been out on is out of blondes, but I have normal cigarettes on him. So might as well, you know, just have oh. a darty before going upstairs to where the bedroom is and having a nap. So, All right, so Keith lights one up. Uh, he's just a small little drew crafting a little tiny flame to light it. Um, he's kind of standing out there in the rain, uh, covered by your hat and your door, just kind of looking out and about. It's going to wait out there for a bit. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? <laughs> Laying there, running my hands across my face. In frustration. <laughs> Things are never just easy, man. We can't just drop kids off at a freaking orphanage and I be know, safe. Right? Oh. We should be out there right now looking for this, these things. 
Um, that kind of catches a. Oh, jeez. Bloody hell, okay. Is this um, Christmas? Um, Miriam kind of turns back to look at you, Dante, and she says, Yeah, I guess now's a good time to discuss that, isn't it? Mm hmm. Are we really going to be going to find a bunch of treasure? Well, uh, let me answer your question with another question. Uh, do you want to leave this place? If so, we kind of have to. Right? Because oh, a gypsy lady told us so? Better than nothing. <laughs> How about we try to leave? Like, um, through the fog? Well, uh, we haven't well, seen anything uh, about it. I mean... People keep uh, saying people get lost in there. I don't want to... And you were there when I, I shot out try. of it. Like, you, you saw when I tried to bottle it and it got aggressive with me. It didn't like it. It did not like being bottled. Didn't like it. Uh, I mean, I guess. Plus, um, I'm kind of stands up. And she says, What are you guys talking about? <laughs> oh, right. That's. I forgot. You don't know anything about this. Well, they live here. They probably know more than us. Well, no, about our fortunes. I mean, yeah. Did you get your fortunes told by the Vistani lady? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Um, she has sort of like a light grimace. Um, she sort of sits down next, uh, on the bed, sort of picking up the baby as she does, so kind of like holding it in her lap. Um, she says, I wouldn't trust the Vistani. Um, I mean, they were really nice. Uh, especially to us. But, they have a reputation around here, and it's not the best idea to go associating with them. Or I don't know. Well, uh, taking their advice ain't as the same as associating. Um, I guess you're right. And so far, who can we associate with around here? The Barovian mayor tried to shoot us down upon leaving and witches try to eat children yeah does it seem like there's a lot of people that are trustworthy around here I yeah. reckon Markov seemed nice well, yeah arena. but then again so did the diner mm. uh yeah and yeah. so did the Gypsies. The mayor seemed nice too when we yeah, first met him. Yeah, the mayor seemed real nice when we first met him. He gave us dinner. He gave us food. Yeah, he gave us dinner. People. Still tried to shoot us, though. Yeah. I mean, Dante Shuffer. <laughs> I did shoot first, though. Uh, no one's denying that. Well, that's been retconned. The mayor <laughs> he said we shot first. Don't take this away from me, it's on camera. <laughs> nah, it's been retconned. It's been CG... Your head's been shitly CGI'd, so you dodge it. Everything. So you like... Nah, I shot. Then he says Galambi. Galambi? Galambi. Galambi. Yeah. And then yeah. he dies. I look around the room, I'm like, did Lizio take Freak to go work on some stuff? I don't know, man. She just kind of disappears. <laughs> For all I know, she's out in the woods right now making some sort of death weapon. There's evil stuff in the woods, man. <laughs> she can just do it at the workshop. You're telling me. I take you that as if that's exactly what they're doing. I don't, I don't question. They're probably making a death weapon. Probably. They do like I mean, death Marcus weapons. Marcus and her are both gone. Uh, says Miriam. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And she usually just turned up at school. 
Get that weird hideout. Back at school, she didn't sleep in the uh, the girl's room. Mm. She had some little camp out in the woods. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised the teachers were okay with that. That seemed like dangerous. A little bit, a little bit. Uh, it's probably the kind of thing that Elliot's supposed to tell them about. <laughs> That's fair, actually. You know what? You're probably right. Well, okay, back on topic. Um, right. This is Miriam. So, all right, let's say we do trust these gypsies, these Vistani. Where it's do we go with any of these vague hints about a place we don't even know? You got a map? I don't have a map. Um, <laughs> Anyone got a map? Um, Arena says, I could draw one, but it's just going to be a straight line with three towns on it. <laughs> nah. they, they give us a lot. Like, apparently the one for the symbols, like, just south of the Lucky. Yeah. Can we try to buy a map? I, I don't know, Gail. It's okay. If you whisper, you'll see what? I, I imagine I, the door's open. Gail's heard this. Gail kind of peeks in, chiming in. <laughs> um, yeah, what in the hell are y'all doing at the door? <laughs> are you in or are you out? You lurking? In. Yeah, that's <laughs> lurking. I'm just listening. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Herb. They might have one at McDonald's. You guys don't know. Like, if we find one, then we Damn. might know that they all exist, so we should at least look for one. And if it's not there, then, oh well, they lied to us. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, which one is our best lead? Uh, says Miriam. Well, there's the one to the south. Uh, there was the one that mentioned the hospital in the next town over. That's, I guess, the most known place we have. Say Markovia? <laughs> Yeah. Um, says Irina. Um, Kirkland's about as far away from Balaki as Barovia Village is. Uh, we could all drive out there maybe like a day or two? Oh, well, so you want up? So we do that. We wait till the car's fixed. We drive there, see what's up. Uh, Miriam kind of sighs and says, I guess it's settled then. Um, so I guess we have to see about dropping off all these kids and then we just get going? <laughs> well, we got to fix the car first, so... I mean, with Elysia not here, I assume that's what they've been working on. Well, no, the van is fine, uh, says Miriam. Well, One yeah. of them was. We sold the other one, says Arena. <laughs> I assume Marcus took the other good van. Which means uh, all we've got is the uh, ammo. Miriam looks a little confused and she says, Took the van where? <laughs> Shrugged. <laughs> He's just driving off with it. Well, did he say where he was going? I think he uh, mentioned something about going back to uh, the village. What? Says Arena. She kind of stands up. Uh, still holding the baby. Yeah, so you want to uh, help out there for a bit. So he's just gone? Uh, I think so. Um, Arena kind of takes the baby, gently places it on the bed. Um, and she kind of stands there, kind of like looking off, uh, kind of tapping her foot on the ground. Um, and then she says in a very different tone in her voice, all of a sudden she says, How long ago did you leave? How long ago did he leave? <laughs> like before we went uh, to By the... now, probably like an hour. Yeah, before we went to the place okay. the, the, the orphanage mm -hmm. 
She's gonna size. Sits back down on the bed. Well, that's good news. Perfect. <laughs> um, at this point. We all die. Yeah. Rocks fall, party um, dies. Yeah, rocks fall in the party and we all die. Yeah. 